Okay, so where I left off, I was moving this bug in the middle ground. And I'm just going to do a little trick where I use the same two assets, but I just alternate between them. Just to save time, instead of doing puppet warp each time, I can do little transformations. Whoops. So I'm kind of going one back and then moving it forward. And maybe, you know, every once in a while, I will puppet warp and change its position a little bit. and shrink it, make it a little bit smaller. And then this is about to the point where I want my, my creature to grab him. So here he is. So that's my second movement cycle of the bug. Do, 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 do. So it shows you the whole trail of movement. Okay, now the bug's here. That's the last place. Now I need to start um, making assets for my character, my mushroom character, as he comes up. And this is what's a little tricky. This is just him in place right now. I have to go to my assets file and I actually need to build all of these different um, capabilities into my character. So just to make it a little bit easier to see, I'm gonna move him up. So this is all one folder. I know he nestles in in the right place, but I'm gonna move him up and I have to build other things. So for instance, I need to be able to close his mouth. So how can I do that? Well, I'm going to do internal compositing. Remember, this is our final compositing project. So I'm going to select on his clean PNG layer. As cleanly and time efficiently as I can, outline his lower jaw and then just duplicate that. I'm going to label that lower jaw. And now I'm going to transform it. Or warp it. Let's see, maybe warp will work better. All right, there's his lip starting to go up. Hit return. Now duplicate that. So I have lower jaw one and now lower jaw copy. <laughs> right. And now on that lower jaw copy, I'm going to transform that and maybe I'll just scale it up a little bit and then warp it back. And maybe distort it a tiny bit. I need to still hook it in with the mouth, so like there. And then I can even try sharpening it using the filter Smart Sharpen. This is screen resolution. That's a little harsh, so let's do that a little bit softer. Or use Unsharp Mask. Really just control the amount. It will preview it for me. You see, that helps. I can do that to the, the first one a little bit too. Okay, very nice. So now I have a way, as I grow these things, how they can work. I'm gonna erase a, away a little bit from this point here.
So this is his jaw opening and closing, built-in assets. And then I, I think I need one more step. So I'm going to duplicate the last one, transform it again, warp it up. Show what kind of looks like teeth, which are just the edges of that lower jaw. Sharpen it. Erase away. Slightly uh, harder edged eraser. The outsides of the jaw. All right. So now I've animated the jaw. And what's great about that is with character assets like this, I can play them in different orders. So I can have his lip kind of quiver if I want at any point. Okay. Now, let me mark all of the jaw ones as a certain color. I'm going to mark all of those as orange. I can even put them in their own folder by holding down shift, putting them in a group, and just call that the jaw group. Mark that whole group as orange. So when I want to play with this jaw, I go into here, and I turn certain things on and off. Next, I need his eye. I want his eye to roll. And instead of going to my uh, assignment to master file, which has everything already outlined, this is just a GIF animation. I'm just going to do it through internal compositing and just kind of roughly select around this shape of his eye and then duplicate it. So these are our character assets through internal compositing. I'm going to call that uh, I. <laughs> and then I'm going to rotate it a little bit. Just a little bit. Then I'm going to duplicate it. And then I'm going to not just rotate it, but also warp it a tiny bit. Or let's, let's distort. So that changes a tiny bit. So now I have these three movements to the eye. Right? And then maybe I want to blink. So I'm going to make another duplicate. And I'm going to do some more internal compositing. This time on the same layer. Because I already made the, the duplicate. So I'm going to take this thing. This little flower shape. And I'm going to transform it. And all I'm going to do is warp the middle of it down. Right? Kind of pushing and pulling it like dough so that it squeezes, so that the eye narrows. And that's going to be um, what I call half-lidded. So I half-lidded. Then I duplicate that. And I take the lower eyelid. And transform that. And warp it and squeeze that in and stretch it. It's all kinds of ways to get expression from your character. This is a big part of character design, knowing which areas give you the most expression. And then I'm going to just go ahead and move the whole eye a tiny bit when this happens so that I don't lose all kind of emotion and movement and maybe distort it all a tiny bit. There we go. So just subtle, subtle movements, right? And that's what I'm going to call a full lidded. And then I just need one that's closed. So I'm going to duplicate that. And this will be the, the eye closed. 
and I do that in the same way. I'm going to sharpen it, and then I'm going to grab this internally. Transform it, warp it, shift it down, and then grab the bottom and do the same. So now I've opened and closed his mouth and I've rolled and um, blinked his eye. Get various poses on the eye. Transform it, warp it, push and pull until it's what I want. I don't know how much I need a full blink, but I think once he like swallows the bug, he might savor it. And when we really enjoy something, we might close our eyes. And then I'm going to rotate the whole thing just a little bit again. Oh yeah, he looks happy. Then if I move his jaw too. Well, I think I need his jaw maybe closed even more. So I'm going to add something. This is why we do it with assets. I'm going to take that jaw. Oh, just make him look like he's blissful. <sighs> As an animator, you build empathy for your characters, right? So now, with that jaw closed, I need him to look like he really enjoys having swallowed that bug. So these are the different, the different eye movements I can get. But I like that little eyelid flutter. Ooh. Hubba hubba. And at any time, I can just go from full lidded to closed as well. Meet me later. All right. And by having the assets folder, I can always change these assets because they're not built into the animation frame yet and kind of improve upon them. And I can sharpen ones that need sharpening. And I want the eyes to be pretty clear. And I can rotate ones that need rotating. Good. Okay. So now I'm going to put the eye group all together, select them all with shift, put them in a folder, call this eye group. And I'll label that with a oh, yellow. Why not? Okay. So what else do I need? I need the tongue. So if I turn off the jaw, turn off the eye, now I need a tongue group. This is going to require a lot of compositing, right? Unless I want to go back to the original tongue. So I'm just going to take that asset as it is and just really grow it and call this tongue. And then I'm going to work backwards here. So for this, I'm going to move my whole character into position. So this is kind of how I want him to spring up, something like this. And then the tongue <laughs> this would be the simplest way to do it. Just shoots out like that. Well, but that looks kind of terrible. Right. So.